Have you used powder foundation in the past or are you afraid of using powder foundation because you think it's going to emphasize your dryness, emphasize fine lines or wrinkles, or it's just gonna look cakey because that's what you saw on TikTok. Today, I'm gonna share with you all of my best tips and tricks to making powder foundation look smooth, creamy, and not heavy or cakey on your skin. We've got a lot to cover, so let's jump right into this video. Skin prep is done and I have my sunscreen on. And sunscreen or skin prep is going to be the first step in making your powder foundation look its best. I'm wearing the Hero Cosmetics Four Shield Super Light Sunscreen with an SPF of 30. This is a mineral-based sunscreen with a little bit of a green tint. It does a great job at neutralizing my redness that I have from my rosacea. It can leave me looking a little blue-purple, so I use a very sheer layer of the Color Silence Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Classic SPF 50 with a PA rating of 4+. plus. I get the bulk of my sun protection from this. This is just to offset so I don't apply the full amount of this and that's okay because I'm using this to color correct this and it has iron oxides and iron oxides can give you a little bit of blue light protection if that's something you subscribe to. Since my sunscreen has been on for a few hours, I'm going to prep my skin and I'm gonna use a new to me product, the Korean beauty brand Hamish. And this is called the Artless Glow Base. This has an SPF of 50 plus and a PA rating of three plus. Kind of like a sunscreen primer luminizer hybrid. Prepping your canvas with a powder foundation, there are two things to take into account. What is the finish of the powder that you're going to apply? Because powders like liquid foundations, they can have a matte finish, satin finish, or more of a luminous finish. Luminous finish powder foundations are a little bit harder to come by. Most of them tend to range more in that matte to satin category. Using a more luminous or light reflective base underneath is going to give a little extra radiant to your powder foundation. So if you're someone who has more dry skin, dehydrated skin, or you want a luminous finish, but your foundation powder itself is not luminous, using glow enhancing products as your base layer will help it look more hydrated, more luminous, and more creamy on the skin. Before you apply your powder product, let this sink into your skin just a little bit, because if you have a very damp base and it's very, very sticky, when your powder touches your face, it doesn't matter if you use your fingers, a sponge, a puff, or a brush. This wet base is going to make your powders stick. Give it a few moments to dry down before you apply anything else on top. While we're letting this dry, let's take a look at a few other primers I really like. One of my favorites for dry skin, and when I was a freelance makeup artist and when I worked at Nordstrom, this was a go-to because I worked for MAC. With MAC, I love Studio Fix Powder. It's one of my holy grail powder foundations, but for people, People with more normal to dry skin, it can be a little too matte because it does have a very natural matte finish. Bobbi Brown Vitamin Rich Face Base. It's like a marriage of like a primer and a moisturizer. So if you have dry skin, you've got texture that you want to plump up, or if you have dry flaky skin, maybe you're going through a retinization journey and you're getting your skin used using a retinoid and you get a little bit of peeling or you've had a sunburn. This can be a great thing for helping to smooth down any flaky bits because the emollients and the waxes in this product will help to create a smooth base. Another product I really like, and this is pretty much great for all skin types. Now, if you're someone who has very dry, dehydrated skin, you might not find this hydrating enough. But if your skin's needs are being met with your skincare products and it is in that perfect neutral state, and you just want something easy that's going to make things look a little bit smoother on the skin, I love the Laura Geller Spackle Skin Perfecting Primer. I have the original clear shade, but there's also luminous finishes. There's a matte finish. I think there's a brightening one and there's a hydrating one. So there's different variations to meet different people's preferences. And this just acts like a great mate or companion to your powder. Even though I have applied the Hamish Artless Glow Base, since it is a little bit more luminous and my skin is more on the balanced to combination oily side, I'm gonna take a little bit of the Laura Geller and just apply this in the center point of my face. And this will add a little bit of a blur effect. This does have some different smoothing ingredients, which can leave a little bit of a slightly mattified finish to the skin. Unless you're someone who has very, oily skin, like your sebum levels or oil levels are just through the roof. A mattifying primer under a powder foundation can be a little tricky to pull off. It can sometimes make people look a little on the kind of dry dehydrate side because it's going to emphasize any texture. Or a situation I find that when I'm working with clients, say for instance, it was I was at Nordstrom working for MAC and I had someone who's come in, no makeup on, and they've got a 
very glowy base from their skincare. Maybe they use oils or something like that that leaves a very wet, shiny finish to the skin, and that's the look they like. Uh, using a mattifying primer in the T-zone where you don't want a greasy shine to the face can be very beneficial. The frequency I've run into that in my personal experience was very, very limited. Next up, I like to take in making the skin ready for powder foundation is to add a little bit of highlighting underneath. Once again, it's going to add a little bit of light. It's going to add a little bit more hydration to the skin because this is going to be a liquid or a cream product that has a little bit of an emollient or a little bit of a slip to it. And if you're unfamiliar with like a liquid highlight, this is going to be one of those trendy products like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. We have the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This is a really nice affordable product. My issue with this is the shades run more on the warm side. So for me, I have a neutral cool undertone. This runs a little too warm golden for me. Ones I like for my skin tone, Auric Glow Lust I like Shade Morganite, which is a nice pink beige color. You also have the Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow. This has a film former in it, which is going to add a little bit of an extra smoothing factor to it, especially as we have more birthdays. Some people find the crow's feet area or the area on the outside part of the eye. It's got a little bit more movement. You've got highs and you've got lows. Something like the Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow, it has a film former, which will temporarily create a smoothing mesh on the skin and just makes things look a little bit smoother. So if you apply this, let it dry down, you apply your concealer, and then you put your powder foundation on top, it will look beautiful, creamy, and smoother. It's very much a you but better finish. Another great drugstore alternative is the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. This has the lowest amount of glow of the products we're talking about today, and it's really nice. It doesn't give a lot of color. It's a low-level shine, so if you're someone who is on the oily side, but you want to add a little bit of a satin finish glow to your skin, this is a beautiful glow base. And one of my longtime favorites, if you are very fair or you like a very cool, icy glow to your skin, I love the Chanel LeBlanc Rosy Lighting Drops. This is a really beautiful, light reflective, silvery pink, and the texture is very, very thin. The glow enhancing product I'm going to use today is a product I just received in the mail yesterday. This is the number one to Chanel Red Camellia Skin Enhancer in the shade Soft Pink. When I saw this online, originally I thought it was going to be like my Chanel Rosy Light Drops because this is a light soft pink and I received this. This is very salmon. It shears out quite a bit. So there it is. You can see it's definitely more of a peach apricot shade. I'm going to run this on the high points of my face. If you are on the balanced combination to oily side, I like to to keep the highlighting on the perimeter of the face. So that's gonna be the cheekbones into the temple and you can even do a little bit here on the outside of the brow. Now it's personal preference. You can use your fingers, your brush, or a sponge. I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Flawless Face Brush just to softly blend this out. Now the reason I like to keep it on the perimeter of my face is because my skin is on that balanced to oily combination side. My skin is going to produce sebum or oils throughout the day. I tend to get shiny on the forehead, the nose, and around my mouth. So if I add extra glow to my powder foundation, which I'm going to add more glow to to make it look more natural and less powder matte throughout the day, then it's going to get too shiny for my personal preference. But if you're someone with oily skin and you love a very luminous finish and your natural oils give you more glow and you just feel the more the merrier, apply your glow product wherever you want. There's some people who like to use the products like the Elf Halo Glow or the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter all over their faces and all over like glow base. I personally find that a little too glowy and unless you have super smooth skin with no texture whatsoever, I find it can emphasize texture on most people. If texture doesn't bother you, go ahead, but I like to highlight and illuminate the skin strategically because I want to embellish the skin to make it look its very best. So top of the cheekbones and then I'm just gonna take whatever's left of my brush. If you're someone with more dry skin, sometimes over the bridge of the nose, cupid's bow, chin, and you can run just a little bit here, a little bit closer to the center, but I never like to highlight right here in the very center of the forehead because it can look a little greasy shiny for my preference. Next up, before applying my powder foundation, I like to do a little bit of spot concealing because powder foundation is a very finicky product. It's very similar to using a liquid or cream product. You generally want to keep your base very thin. You want to take the smallest amount of product you can and spread it out as far as you can. Because if you have a lot of product and you just continue to build and build and build, the more product you add, the more texture you're going to enhance. And we want to keep that minimized because we're using a powder foundation to keep our skin looking fresh. And I like to use a slightly more hydrating or emollient concealer. I personally don't have a ton of things to conceal. My under eyes are a little discolored from allergy season. So you can, I could use something like a little bit of a color corrector. Or what I generally do on most days when I'm using 
same powder foundation as my quick out the door is I'll take a lightweight hydrating concealer. My personal favorite is one that I can't get here in Canada, but when I visit the US, I can pick it up at Ulta Beauty. Youthful Glow Concealer and I wear shade Fair cool. When I'm applying concealer, I like to have a small handheld mirror. That way I can check out my face in different points. And when I'm looking at my under eye, I like to hold my mirror at eye level, tilt my chin down. Right here, I will see a hollow. And that hollow looks a little bit more blue purple. So I'm apply a little bit of concealer here. I'm going to let it dry down, give me a little bit more coverage out of my product. I'll take a tiny bit here where I have a little bit more of a recession. Right here, my skin feels a little dark. And then I'm going to brighten up right here. Where I have rosacea, I can get a a little red and I can have little broken capillaries through here. Right here on my nose tends to be a little red and my chin is quite red. Now I like to use a slightly smaller brush but you could continue using the brush that we used for our glow enhancer. I'm going to use a Real Techniques setting brush and I like this brush because I can use it with liquids, creams, or powders. So fewer brushes to clean up at the end of the day. I want the most coverage on my under eye area. I'm going to let that continue to set and when I'm blending out my concealer I like to think about where do I need the least coverage. I'm going to start here on the side of my nose and just kind of Pat, keeping it in the general vicinity where I want the coverage. And then just kind of pressing is going to help it melt into the skin. It's going to help spread out because every time you press, it's adding a superficial amount of powder that's a pressure that's going to help it spread out. So even though I have it here, if I tap it, a little bit of the product is going to disperse outwards. And then I can go to the eyes where I wanted the most coverage. So now without waiting, I like to take a skin refreshing spray. I like to use the MAC Fix Plus because this has glycerin and glycerin is a humectant. Humectants draw moisture from our ambient environment and pull them into the skin. So I'm gonna apply a generous layer all over my face. Give it about 30 seconds to a minute to dry down. And this is going to help out a little extra hydration to the skin, but you're also having that humectant base that is going to pull moisture from the environment into our powder foundation we're gonna ready to apply and make it look a little bit smoother, a little bit more creamy on the skin. Now we are ready to apply our powder foundation. Powder foundation, much like liquid foundation, has different variations. Three main variations I've run across with powder foundations are going to be your classic pressed powder foundation. My favorite is from MAC. This is the Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation. I wear shade in three or neutral three. This is going to give you a really lovely natural matte finish. And I find the coverage to be completely customizable. Depending on how you apply it is going to dictate whether you get a sheer light coverage and you can build it all the way up to a full opaque coverage. MAC Studio Fix Powder is my preferred pressed powder foundation. One of my favorite powder foundations for every day and our second category is going to be your baked powder foundations. The one I have here that I love is from Laura Geller. This is the Baked Balance and Brighten Foundation in the shade Porcelain. Baked foundations, they are going to have a little bit more of a luminosity. They almost give healthy sheen or glow to the skin. There's something about how the minerals are baked into this commonly dome-shaped powder that give the skin this almost ethereal luminosity to it. And it's very, very healthy and fresh looking on the skin. It is one of the most beautiful, easy to apply formulas. This formula, I find it runs a little bit more on the slightly more sheer end of the spectrum, especially compared to the MAC. I can comfortably get a sheer to, I would say about medium coverage. You can build this up to full coverage, but you're gonna have to work for a little bit more and you're gonna use a slightly stiffer brush or more dense brush, which we'll talk about brushes in just a moment. And the third main category of powder foundation is going to be your loose powder foundations. And these can either be a standard powder or a mineral powder, but I feel like a lot of us are familiar with mineral powder foundations, products like your Jane Iredell Amazing Base or the Bare Minerals. I have the original and the matte powder foundations with SPF 15. Today, I am going to be using the Bare Minerals because this is going to be the most complicated or the most difficult to apply in my personal opinion, but it is one of the most beautiful foundations if you apply it correctly. Before we apply our powder foundation, we need to look at how we're gonna apply it. You could technically use your fingers. You're gonna probably get a very thick coverage and it's not gonna be very even, but in a pinch, I'm sure you could make it work. I love using a brush. You've had some company who release these beauty sponges, like a, almost like a beauty blender for powder foundation. I find those, once again, yield a really heavy finish and then you'll have your classic puff. I see a lot of TikTok where you'll see people taking their little puff, loading it up and pressing on and they complain it looks very heavy. This is a dense, you can hear it. You can hear how dense that is. The denser the product, 
the more product you pick up because this is a flocked material. It's going to cling and almost like scrape and lift off product and then you're depositing all of it onto the surface of your face. It's going to get very heavy very quickly. Unless it's an emergency situation or I need to blend out something that got a little heavy, I very rarely use these with powder foundation. Personal preference. That's the whole thing with this video, personal preference. I love brushes. And over the years, I have purchased a lot of powder foundation brushes. Some of them have a dome surface. Some of them are gonna have a flat surface. And then sometimes you'll have brushes that look similar. Like these are both a round shape from above and they have a flat surface. But if you compare these two, the one here, the handy brush from Jane Iredell, it has a lot of flexibility to it. And the number six Heavenly Luxe flat top buffing foundation brush from It Cosmetics, also flat top, but it's a lot denser. It doesn't have that same flexibility. These are both going to give you easy coverage. It's just for me, it's not quick as I want it to be. And I find using a stiffer brush, it's gonna give you a very perfected coverage, but similar to using a powder puff, it can make things look a little heavy. Personally, these are not my favorite. My preferred style is using a large fluffy powder brush. These will normally be marketed as, as just a standard powder brush, whether it's a setting powder or a finishing powder, or you'll just commonly see them called powder brush. My three favorites are the Real Techniques RT201 powder brush, longtime Holy Grail favorite MAC 150S. This is the classic powder brush and this is the stunning. This plus Studio Fix Powder, game over. I've got a video where I talk all about this combination. It was one of the very first videos I ever posted. Award-winning combo, in my opinion, perfect. And then you'll have these really big, robust brushes. They have a little bit more stiffness to it, but this isn't gonna give you a little bit more coverage, but it's gonna help diffuse things out. This is a BK Beauty number 105, and I love using this on my lazy days with my Laura Geller. Something about the shape and this density does really well with picking up baked powder, because compared to the loose powder or the pressed powder. The baked formula is going to be the stiffest of the three. And sometimes you need a brush that's gonna help get in there a little bit more and buff it on. For general ease of application, where I just want an easy combination, something I bring a lot with me on vacation, the Real Techniques powder brush. This is a fluffy dome shaped brush. You have a nice spring to it. Like if I press down, it's going to flail to any side I press it. And what I love is this is not going to pick up a ton of product because when we apply our powder foundation, less is more. It's buffing, it's blending, it's taking time. I'm gonna be using the Bare Minerals. I have the original formula and I have the matte formula. If you're curious about the two, they are both a little bit more on the slightly luminous side. The matte formula is not a true matte, it's going to be a luminous matte. These have ing mineral ingredients, so you'll have products like zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, which are gonna help give you the SPF, which is an SPF 15 in this product, and they have mica. Mica is a naturally reflective ingredient, something that you find a lot in your highlighters. It's They are gonna give a little bit of glow to the skin, but they also help with your blend. And the matte formula does have a few extra ingredients compared to the original foundation, which help to absorb excess oil. My favorite way, since I have both, is I mix a little bit together, so I get a slightly more natural matte finish out of these two, but throughout the day, as they mix with my oils and the products I've already got on my skin, it's going to just make it look really beautiful. And with your mineral powder foundations, less is more, so a lot of times inside, you will have this little sifter. I turn it to where only technically one and the two middle dots, those are only halfway open, so not a large opening. And with your powder foundations, you will always have the lid. And the lid is normally my favorite place to work out of. My lid is clean. It almost looks like I've never used this, but this one I've been working on for a couple months. A lot of times when you see these powder lids, they will have a ton of product. It, it will look like your lid is the color of your powder foundation or darker. That is not a good sign because when you're picking up your powder, your brush is coming in contact with your face. Your face has the emollients of the products underneath as well as the oil or sebum from your skin. So that means your lid now has a mix of the powder foundation and the oils from your face and your product. And that can make things get very patchy long term. Just when you remember and when you have time, take a little bit of makeup remover or a little bit of a micellar water on a cotton round, wipe it off, and you're good to go. Using both powder powders, I take about that much. It's not much at all. Back in the day, 
day when I worked at Sephora, Bare Minerals was one of my favorite products to match people to because it's just, it gives a really pretty look and it's safe for most skin types. When someone showed me how they use theirs, they would have a cap full of product, that, too much. This is going to be enough for my base layer and I'm gonna use my large fluffy brush, just like the infomercial told us from the 90s. You are going to swirl your brush in. I like to swirl clockwise and counterclockwise. So really swirl my brush in, pick up the brush and then tap it off. And again, I like to tap my brush off all the way around. And the tapping is gonna help some of the excess product come off, but it's also gonna help make sure the powder is distributed throughout the brush. Before I start buffing, I'm going to stipple the brush all over. This is going to lay down a preliminary layer of powder foundation. And now it's gonna make things a little bit easier because now all you have to do is blend to connect the dots. So starting off in circular motions, I like to keep my hand a little bit further down. It's gonna keep less pressure from the brush bundle, which is going to help you glaze the skin. We don't need to jab the brush into the skin. We're not holding our brush super close, pressing in, because that's just gonna, it's gonna ruin your brush in the long term. And brushes, brushes are investment. You can spend a little bit on a brush or you can spend a lot on a brush. If you take care of your brush, they will last you for years. So light hand, take your time, buff, whisk over the skin. When I'm applying powder foundation, my application does not change whether I'm using a pressed, a baked, or a loose powder. I will take my time and I'll buff. So I just buffed going in a counterclockwise motion. Now I'll go back the other way, buff it going clockwise. I just like to take my time, buff back and forth because as the powder products sink into the skin, they are going to start mixing with the natural oils of your skin and the emollients of the product. And it's gonna help it melt. It's gonna take on more of a creamy finish. This is that step that is going to make your skin look like a perfected version of itself. So just take your time, blend into the skin, and this will also allow you to get a little bit more coverage because you are spreading this veil over the skin. So now, instead of having to add more product and more product because you have a concentrated bit here and a concentrated bit here, now you have to connect them. You're getting that diffusion of product all over the skin, which is going to help it look more even. And you've already applied a little bit of concealer to your hot spot areas where you're cognizant that you want more coverage. Now, since I've done this side, we can take a look. Here's one layer of my mixture of the Bare Minerals Original and the Bare Minerals Matte on my skin versus the side with just my prep products. You can still see the natural sheen on this side. On this side, things look a little bit more matte. Give it a moment, let it warm up, let it continue to melt into the skin, and we'll have the glow back. Powder foundation, much like anything, normally I find it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to warm up with the skin, melt into the skin, almost like a, your favorite jeans. When you first take them out of the wash and you put them on, they might be a little tight. Give it a few minutes, let them stretch out, and they'll be the perfect jean ready for any occasion. Your foundation is the same way. Let it warm up, let it melt down, let it get a little worn in, and it will look beautiful. Another small amount on my brush. Roll my brush in, going counterclockwise and clockwise. Just making sure it's worked into all areas of my brush. Tap it off. And then starting again, this time on the right side of my face. Stipple all over and then buff. One benefit I will say that mineral powder foundations have is when you have a loose mineral powder, there's something about them that does really well around hair bearing areas, whether that is your hairline, your eyebrows, or facial hair, it works really well with that too. Working it into those areas, if you take your brush and just buff right over those areas, there's something about the loose mineral formula that almost goes past the hair and deposits directly onto the skin. When I did some commercial work, I would use the Jane Iredell Loose Powder Foundation with a lot of my male clients, and especially around the face. So maybe I use something like a MAC face and body all over, but maybe they were at the beach and like their hairline looked really white or their beard looked Looked really white in the camera, I could take some of that powder foundation, work it into the area and make things look a little bit more balanced because when you're on a camera, things can look really, <laughs> they can just be very emphasized. So take your time, work and blend. I go right over the eyelid, that's personal preference. If you're someone who's gonna do like an eyeshadow base, you can leave it where it's at, but just take your time, buff, and then whatever's left on my brush after that second side, I'll just take it onto the neck. That way everything just has a little bit of a blend. So here is one thin layer of powder foundation 
all over. Now remember, I did apply a little bit of concealer under my eyes and on the sides of my nose where I have redness and on my chin. Oh, and I applied a little dot on the bridge of my nose, but the rest of my skin is all powder foundation. If you're someone who wants more coverage, what I like to say is use a few different mirrors and this goes with any type of makeup. If I'm just looking at the mirror in that one distance, it's going to look different. So sometimes I like to have a mirror a little bit closer because think about if you are in a close setting and you're talking to maybe a date or a business partner and you're up close, you want to make sure your makeup looks good up close. You don't want to see anything settling into any pores. You don't want to see anything looking heavy. And if you're at a social distance, you want to make sure it looks great here. But a great trick is if you're past the up close test, you're going to generally look even better from afar. If you want to build up your coverage even more, you are going to follow the same steps. Use a little bit of product and build up. I'm happy with where it's at here. So now let me show you a few more steps to make this look even more creamy on the skin. Fix Plus from MAC. Once again, I'm gonna let those humectants in the formula liven this up and add a little extra juicy glow to the skin. Where I do have a powder on, and this is wet, you are making a powder which is inherently dry, wet. So let it set for just a moment. Just give it about, again, 30 to 60 seconds. Let it absorb, let it melt into the skin before you start manipulating with more powders or creams. With that setting spray alone, you should already have a little bit of glow to your skin. But if you're someone who's wearing a powder foundation, it doesn't matter if it's the pressed powder, the baked powder, or the loose powder, you might still feel a little matte. So now is a great time to add in some cream and liquid product thinly, deliberately, but that thin, deliberate, precise placement is going to make your skin look plump and glowy like you just applied the most fresh liquid product, but you don't have to worry about moving around like you would a liquid foundation. So I'm gonna start off with a highlighter. I'm going to use the Clinique Chubby Stick Highlighter, and it only comes in one shade. This is 01 Hefty Highlight. You can use a brush, you can use a sponge. I wouldn't personally go straight from the applicator. I just like to use my index finger. So I will just work it on to my index finger. I am building up a little bit just because I like to make things easier. So then I just rub my fingers together and then tap right over. My finger will act like my beauty sponge and I can just tap it on. And what I like to do is the warmth of my fingers. As you remember, body heat is in our fingertips. It's going to melt those creams into the powder and just make it look more realistic. Now I like to use a little bit of a cream blush. I am torn. I've got two different formulas and both are new to me. So the first one I have is from Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Plump Plumping Blush Veil and I have the shade Pinch Me Pink. Looks like this and looks like this. I've heard nothing but great things about these. And then I have a new K-Beauty blush from a brand I've not tried before for Lily by Red, and this is the Love Beam Cream Cheek in, in the shade number two. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> So I have a very cool toned Dior Rosy Glow adjacent color. Oh, that's so pretty. And then I have this more like peach pink or a coral shade. So warmer pink, cooler pink. My shirt is pretty much a aqua blue. They both look fun. I'm gonna mix, okay. My skin is more on the cool tone side, so I'm going to start off with the Lily by Red, and I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Flawless Face Brush. Since I'm not familiar with this formula, I'm gonna start by picking up the product on my brush, and then on the back of my hand. I'm going to work it into the brush and then I can almost kind of gauge there. If it looks super glossy on the hand, it's gonna be a very emollient product which could just move around our product. So I'm using a light hand and I'm going to, hold on, I need a mirror to see. I'm gonna use a light hand and just bounce my brush over, stippling my brush like I would a beauty sponge. Oh, that's really pretty. So there's the Lily by Red. That's a very pretty look. It's got a strong white base in it. So this is definitely gonna be a blush that is better for, I would say fair to light skin with a cool undertone. If you have more light medium skin, this could work, but it might pull a little gray ashy on the skin because of that white base. And then I just like to take a little bit over the nose, on the chin, a pinch into the temple. I've got quite a bit of product on the back of my hand. I am just going to buff my brush into my hand. I'm using cream product now. So it's going to help liven up other parts of the face. And then now, because I'm curious, I'm gonna use the Makeup by Mario again. This is the Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil in the shade Pinch Me Peak. This is gonna be a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna pick this up on my brush. 
on the back of my hand, not much is coming off and this looks drier than the Lily by Red formula. So I'm gonna take this here on the front of my cheek as like a pop of color. It's gonna be focal point of my flush. Did I get product? Uh, this formula is a lot softer. It's gonna have a lot more of a sheerness to it, which is nice, you can build it. It's also drier, so that means it's gonna be less likely to move your powder products if you're applying on top. But keep using that stippling motion. Don't swipe, you could create a kind of muddy mess. So again, use your setting spray, MAC 6 Plus, just give it a quick mist. Let it dry down. And at this point, we are 50 minutes into the video. But after editing, this could be, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes into the video. Doing this on every day, at first, it's going to feel like it takes a little bit longer. But with practice, I've had a lot of my clients, and I was a freelancer, told me that they could get their makeup done in about 15 minutes. It takes practice, but as soon as you get used to the layers and how to optimize your time, it can become a very quick look. Using powder foundation is generally my everyday. After I apply my sunscreen, I let that dry down. And then once I apply my makeup, I can normally finish my whole face in 15 to 20 minutes. So it's a very quick thing, but you just have to get used to it because this can be a different process than a lot of people are used to. Now what you wanna do is use a very light hand and press. If you feel a tackiness to the skin, you have two options. You can either give it a couple more seconds, let it continue to dry down, or you can take a little bit of a setting powder. I am gonna keep things easy. LYS Triple Fix Powder, shade Resilient, which is translucent. My same powder brush. Bounce my brush into the powder, tap off the excess, and anywhere I apply my creams, I'm just going to stipple my brush over, and then just for good measure, I like to stipple over everything else because we've got enough glow, going onto the skin that this is going to keep looking glowy. And if I press, no longer tacky. If you are someone who has oily skin and you just applied the creams, you can either use a, something more matte on top to give you more of a satin matte finish, or if you're someone who just feels like your face eats makeup, layering can help. I don't wanna use another highlighter. I'm gonna use a luminous blusher. But first, let's add a little bit of bronzer. It's summer. I am gonna use the Laura Geller Baked Bronze and Brighten in the shade Fair, which is my favorite bronzer for fair cool or neutral skin or neutral cool skin because it has a slight cool bubblegum paint. I'm gonna use my same brush and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of the product. This is a baked formula, very reminiscent of the powder foundation. I'm just gonna run this on the perimeter, a little bit here on the neck and whatever's left on the center portion of the forehead and nose and chin. I'm gonna use a new illuminating product. This was limited edition, but you can still get it online when I'm recording this 2023 Chanel LeBlanc collection. This is the Fantasy de Chanel Illuminating Powder Blush. Blush. Really beautiful, almost tweed-like embossment. You could use another brush. I'm gonna use my same powder brush because if we're keeping this everyday friendly, I don't like dirtying up a bunch of brushes. So I'm gonna use this stipple over the high point so you can see that beautiful, warm pink, which is gonna play really well with the aqua blue color of my shirt. You know what, we've come this far. I'm gonna take a little bit more of the bronzer with my e.l.f. Eye Fluffy Blender brush, and I'm gonna run that through my socket line. And then I'm gonna take the same brush, go back into the Chanel Luminous Powder brush, blush, run that over my eyelid into the socket. I love using the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. This is in the shade Mountain Lion, and this is gonna give me a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of highlight. Use my ring finger, and I'm gonna tap right over my eyelid lid to give a little bit of a glow. For my eyebrows, I just use a clear brow gel since I have microblading done. This is the Benefit Fluff Up Brow Wax. And this is just really great for a little bit of hold and some texture. I use mascara. This is the Clinique Lash Power Mascara in the shade Dark Chocolate. And then for lips, whatever color you wanna wear. <laughs> I would use one of my Dior Refillable Lipstick. This is the shade Thai and Dior. It's a nice pink nude shade for me. And that's pretty much like an everyday makeup using powder foundation. Hi y'all, it's been about six hours and I was getting ready to wash my face, get ready for bed. And I thought I would share with you what the powder foundation looks like up close. A Little bit of creasing here, a little bit of dryness popping through right here, but overall here is my skin with the Bare Minerals Powder Foundation layering creams on top. So six hours into the wear, gotten a little shiny, but I'm not super shiny. And you know, it is early July here in Toronto, Canada, and it was humid today. So here is the face. So you can see how it wears throughout the day and I have normal or balanced to combination oily skin. So here you go. I hope this video was helpful. I know it's gonna be a little bit longer, but I wanted to share with you every tip and trick I know from my 12 plus years doing 
makeup and you know I love powder foundation I dislike that it gets a rep of it's not great for dry skin it's not great for mature skin it can work for anyone and I wanted to create this video to have all of my best tips and tricks and one spot so if you are curious about powder foundation or maybe you've got a powder foundation kicking around in your makeup collection that you don't know what to do with try this it might work if this works well for you i would love to know in the comment section down below and if you found value in this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already all the products i used and featured today will be listed in the description box for your convenience and until next time take care of yourself wherever it is you're on the world bye y'all